Hi everyone, I'm Ben, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to test measurement invariance for a multiple group confirmatory factor analysis. So, um, this is our uh, basic CFA single group, you know, standard model. Um, we have anxiety, which is, uh, well, anxiety, social distance, which is a measure of political polarization, and attribution of malevolence, which is a measure of political polarization. And we're going to compare Democrats and Republicans. So you see in this data set, we have 354 Democrats and 252 Republicans to see if they understand these three variables to mean the same thing. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, enter our grouping variable. And we just do that by typing group equals, and then in quotation marks, the name of our grouping variable. And my grouping variable is party two. So if we fit this model, it'll give us um, a set of loadings, covariances, intercepts, and variances for each group. So for Democrats, we see that the loadings for anxiety are 1.366, 1.353, and 1.4. And for Republicans, the loadings for the anxiety variable are 1.367, 1.527, and 1.421. So in the next step, we're going to constrain the loadings to be equal for Democrats and Republicans. So rather than um, estimating a unique value for each group on these loadings, it'll assume that the group loadings are the same, it'll enforce them to be equal, um, and so it'll only give us, see here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 loadings for Republicans and 10 loadings for Democrats, so we have 20 loadings in total. When we constrain them to be equal, it'll only give us 10 loadings, um, one loading for both groups on each item. And here we can inspect our model fit and see that the CFI is 0.981, which is good. Uh, we have solid RMSEA, we have solid SRMR, um, but we're going to need to reference back to this 0.981 because when we constrain the loadings to be equal for weak invariance and then when we constrain the intercepts to be equal for strong invariance, we're going to use this number to determine whether that equality constraint is appropriate. It's also worth noting that right now we have 64 degrees of freedom. So the two numbers to remember right now, 64 degrees of freedom and a CFI of 0.981. And we can even write that down here, DF equals 64 and CFI, oops, CFI equals 0.981, just so that we don't forget. So we can keep those numbers handy. Now let's go ahead and copy this initial model and paste it. And let's update everything, the labels, so M1.1, fit 1.1. Now to constrain these loadings to be equal, all we need to do is do group.equal equals in quotation marks loadings. And so by adding this, to the fit line, it's going to constrain these loadings to be equal across both Democrats and Republicans. So if we run that and look at the output, now we will see a couple of things. The first is that it's applied these labels to all of the loadings. That's how you constrain something to be equal in Levon. You give it a label that is the same label applied to you know whatever you want it to be constrained to be equal to. So this dot p1 dot is a label that we'll see above applied to the Democrat or to the Republican loadings as well. Now we'll see the anxiety items are 1.401, 1.462, and 1.462. And the fact that these are low, these, the, the fact that EM8 has the same loading as EM9 is just a coincidence. That doesn't have any, um, you know, it's not supposed to be that way. It just happens to be that way. So if you look at social distance, it's 1.544, 1.461, 1.557, and 1.351. And if we look up at the Republicans now, we have those same labels, which results in an equality constraint that these loadings are the same loadings as we had for Democrats. So 1.401, 1.462, 1.451, 1.451, 1.451, 1.451, 1.451, 1.451, 1.451, 1.451, 1.451, 1.451, 1.451, 1.451, 1.451, 1.451, 1.451, 1.451, 1
1.544, 1 1.461, so all of these loadings are the same. Um, interestingly and importantly, the variance for Republicans is still fixed to 1.0 because we're using the fixed factor method of identification where we fix the latent variance to 1.0. But there's no assumption when you're testing for metric invariance, when you're testing for loading invariance, there's no assumption that the latent variances will be equal across group. So we're not making a homogeneity of variance assumptions with regard to the actual variables we're measuring. We're only assuming that the loading structure is the same for Republicans and Democrats. That means that um, we're actually going to estimate variances for Democrats rather than have those variances be fixed to 1.0. So we're making 10 fewer loading estimates because instead of estimating 20 loadings, 10 for Democrats and 10 for Republicans, we're only estimating 10 loadings, one, you know, that is one for each item that is equal for both groups. But we're estimating three latent variances that we hadn't previously estimated. We're estimating the latent variance for anxiety for Democrats. For Republicans, it's still fixed to 1.0. And the variance for social distance and attribution to malevolence for Republicans still fixed to 1.0. But for Democrats, we're now estimating the variances because metric invariance does not assume homogene homogeneity of variance of the latent variables. It only assumes um, equivalence in the loading structure of the variables. That means with 10 fewer loadings but three additional latent variances, there should be a degree of freedom change of seven. So 10 fewer loadings, we get 10 degrees of freedom, but three additional variances, we give three back. So 10 minus three is seven. So looking at our other degrees of freedom, 64, that means this model should have 71 degrees of freedom, 64 plus seven. And if it's not that, it suggests we did something wrong. So it's always good to have in your mind, how many degrees of freedom am I gonna see? And you calculate that by saying, okay, However many groups I have, you know, I'm estimating as many fewer loadings, you know, so if you have two groups, it'll just be plus the number of items you have minus the number of latent variables you have. Um, but if you have three groups, then you'll have to do that twice, right? Because it would be, say we had Democrats, Republicans, and independents, then we would be estimating 10 fewer loadings for independents as well, but we would be estimating three more variances for independents as well. Anyway. All that to say, our math checks out. We have 71 degrees of freedom. Great success. We'll make a note of that down here. Degree of freedom equals 71. Now we're looking at the CFI, and our CFI here is 0.980. So we'll make a note of that, 0 0.980. And that's important for uh, one reason and one reason only. This uh, Chung and Rensfold paper recommends that when you're testing for measurement invariance, you use the change in CFI to determine if you have invariance. And so they say a value of delta CFI smaller than or equal to negative 0.01, so one tenth of a point, indicates that the null hypothesis of invariance should not be rejected. What does that mean? That means that if this number went from 0.981 to 0.970, it would have gone down uh, 0 0.011 points, which would have been a larger decrease in CFI than Chung and Rensfold say is appropriate. That would mean that we don't have equivalent loadings uh, for Democrats and Republicans. In other words, it would mean that these measures aren't operating the same for Democrats and Republicans. We're functionally not measuring the same variable. But it only changed uh, one one thousandth of a point, so that means we pass the loading invariance test. So that gives us weak or metric invariance, and our next step is to establish strong or scalar or intercept invariance. And to do that, we need to just add to this group.equal line 
intercepts. However, this could create a problem for us because we have loadings and intercepts, so we're giving R a list of commands, group.equal, these things, and anytime we list in R, we need to do C parentheses. So, C parentheses, loadings, comma, intercepts. And this will constrain the item intercepts to be equal. So EM6, EM8, EM9, oops, those are the variances. So the intercept for EM6 for um, Democrats is 2.59, and the intercept for EM6 for Republicans is 2.49. But both of the, both Republicans and Democrats have latent intercepts fixed to zero. So when we add this, it's gonna estimate the latent intercept for Democrats but it's going to constrain all of the intercepts at the item level to be equal across groups. Um, so in other words, we'll get 10 more degrees of freedom for the 10 fewer item level intercepts that we're not estimating any longer, but we'll have to give back three degrees of freedom. So again, we should expect our degrees of freedom to go up seven, 10 more from the item level intercepts, minus three more for the latent variable intercepts. So it should be 78 degrees of freedom. And we see, looking at the intercepts, we have now estimates of uh, latent intercepts for Democrats. And this actually has a sensible interpretation. It means that Democrats have um, 0.125 more anxiety than Republicans, 0.173 more social distance than Republicans, and 0 0.107 less attribution of malevolence than Republicans. So this is an indication that there are some observed mean differences. But now the item level means or the item level intercepts are going to be equivalent. So for EM6 for Democrats, it's 2.449 and the item level mean for Republicans is also 2.449. And this will be the same all the way down because they're constrained to be equal. And you see Republicans still have the latent variances fixed to zero because that's how we set the scale with the fixed factor method. Then if we go up to our degrees of freedom, just as predicted, we have 78 degrees of freedom here. So we can make a quick note of that. Degree of freedom equals 78. And the CFI is 0 0.980, which happens to be the exact same CFI as our loading invariant model. So it didn't go down at all, not, not one bit. So this does suggest that we have measurement invariance, which is great. It means that the variables we use in this study work the same for Democrats as they do Republicans. Um, which I think everybody would expect, you know, in this data, that's not a particularly novel finding, but this could be really powerful if you're doing um, multilingual research where you want to make sure that the measures that you translated are being interpreted the same in a second language. If you're doing cross-cultural research and you're translating concepts that were developed in the United States and you want to see if those concepts have the same um, measurement properties when applied to a different cultural context, um, this can be really powerful. So um, if you find yourself doing work like that, um, I hope that uh, you find this video useful, and I hope you find the tools offered to you by structural equation modeling, particularly multiple group confirmatory factor analysis, to be very handy. Um, once you have measurement invariance in your multiple group model, there are some other cool things you can do too, and uh, maybe I'll make a video on that in the future. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any suggestions for something you'd like to see uh, or something you'd like to know how to do, um, and maybe I can record a quick video and upload it in the future. Thanks for watching.